Honestly, I do not know where to begin because we have a saying that we celebrate today, San Carlos Borromeo, patron saint of arts and learning, founder of seminaries, model pastor, he is the patron saint of the university in which I was assigned for a long time in Cebu for 32 years, the University of San Carlos. I'd like to greet my friends at the University of San Carlos. Happy Fiesta! As you and I celebrate today the memory of our patron saint, San Carlos Borromeo. That is how we call him. We do not call him by his English name. We do not call him Charles Borromeo. We call him San Carlos Borromeo. My dear brothers and sisters, the first reading is equally beautiful today. I do not know if you notice it, but it's beautiful. It says, I quote, None of us lives for himself only. None of us dies for himself only. If we live, we live for the Lord. If we die, we die as his servants. Whether we live or die, we all belong to the Lord. Isn't it lovely? Isn't it beautiful? Think about it. None of us lives for oneself only. None of us dies for oneself only. If we live, we live for the Lord. If we die, we die as His servants. That is why whether we live or whether we die, all of us belong to God. Do you not remember a song that was inspired by this biblical passage from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans? I'm sure you know the song that I am referring to in Filipino. It says, and I quote, Walang sino man ang nabubuhay. You know the song? Para sa sarili lamang. Beautiful. Think about it. Let us make it as our material for personal reflection today. Walang sino man ang namamatay para sa sarili lamang. That is inspired by these lines from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. And the final sentence, the final statement in this first reading is very instructive. It is a very apt reminder. It says, each of us at the end of our life shall give an account of ourselves to God. In other words, at the end of life, we will give a performance report to the Lord. Each of us will give and is required to submit a performance report to God. Beautiful. Reflect about this, especially during the month of November because the month of November is especially dedicated to the dead or for our dead. And we remember the dead, especially during this month of November. I'd like to say a few words about the gospel. It's beautiful. You know the gospel? The parable of the lost sheep. The parable of the lost coin. But there is another, but did, we did not read it today because otherwise it would be too long. The parable of the lost son or the parable of the prodigal son. They are narrated in the Gospel of Luke one after the other. They are found in Luke chapter 15. So I'll give you a little assignment. If you have time today, please read the whole chapter 15 today in which you will find... The parable of the lost son, the parable of the lost sheep, the parable of the lost coin, ang talinhaga ng nawawalang anak, ang talinhaga ng nawawalang tupa, 
ang talinhaga ng nawawalang bariyang pilak. My dear brothers and sisters, these three parables, they are known as the parables of divine mercy. Put together, they are the parables of divine mercy. They are also known as the parables of the outcasts. These two parables today, they are twin parables. They were probably narrated together by the Lord Jesus on the same occasion. Why do we say that they were probably narrated by Jesus probably on the same place, in the same place, on the same occasion? The observation is suggested by their perfect symmetry. There is perfect symmetry between these two parables. Their obvious subordination to the same lesson. The obvious subordination to the same message. And we say that they are probably used together by Jesus because of the use of the connecting link or. Try to read your, your, your gospel. The connecting link or is there. After narrating the parable of the lost sheep, there is the parable of the lost coin and they are connected by the connecting link or. They also form a contrast. Where is the contrast between the parable of the lost sheep and the parable of the lost coin? They also form a contrast in the sense that the parable of the lost sheep portrays a man. The shepherd is a man. The parable of the lost coin portrays a woman. The one who lost a coin is a woman. Each in his proper surrounding and preoccupation. And finally, what is the main message of these twin parables? There are actually several but we cannot mention all of them. My dear friends, these two parables show the real face of God. What is the real face of God? That our God is rich in mercy and compassion. Our God is full of mercy and compassion. Our God never runs out of mercy and compassion and this is the true face of the father in heaven love incarnated in mercy is the true character of god the father is always faithful to his fatherhood or to his motherhood the parable remains open it is ours to supply the ending because the story is actually the parable or the story of each one of us. You supply the ending. I will supply the ending. And really, finally, lastly, these two parables spell out the radical difference between what we call revealed religion of the Bible and the natural religions. What is the difference? In the natural religions, it is man who is searching for God and he would even invent God if he could not find one. This is what we call natural religions. Christianity is a revealed religion. In Christianity, it is not man who is searching for God. It is God who takes the initiative, who makes the first move. He is the one who is searching for us. Amen.